Hello, I'm Eric Reno, and this is a video for Tipsquirrel.com, the free website for everything Photoshop and Lightroom. In this video, I'll be making this illustration or comic strip effect. Now, this is a highly adaptive technique, so whatever look you're going for, this could be for you. Let's jump into Photoshop and see how it's done. So here I am in Photoshop, I've got my image all ready to go. My image comes from Photolia. There should be details up on the screen right about now. Now, the first thing I want to do to this is to give it a quick crop. So I'm going to get my crop tool and then with a one to one ratio, just come in and move him over a little bit and get a nice square going. Click the tick. I'm all ready to go. Now I'm going to need a duplicate of this layer. So with the layer unlocked, I can go to layer, new and layer via copy and then turn the visibility of the top one off. Now make sure that the bottom one is the one we're working on. I'm going to right click on that and turn it into a smart object. And this keeps all our versatility right open for us. Let's go and add some smart filters. First one is to go to filter and noise and then median. Now this is going to smudge it all up a little bit. You can notice that I've set mine to 10 and that's really where I want it. But you can bring this to however you want it to look. Obviously, subtlety is a little bit of the key here, but it depends on what you're going for. 10 is good for me. I'm going to click OK. Next, I want to add another filter. So filter and stylize and find edges. Now, in this case, there's no dialog box and this isn't really what I'm after. But if I come over to my smart filters here in the layers panel, you'll see I've got a little icon here, which I can double click and I can change the blending mode. I want to change the blending mode here from normal to multiply. And that darkens the edges off just a little bit. If I change the opacity all the way down, you can see the difference that it's making. Good. I'm going to keep it 100% and click OK. Another filter now. Let's go to filter and filter gallery. And in here, I'm looking for the graphics pen. Now you'll find it under sketch. I find it easier to come up to the menu here and find it here. They're all in alphabetical order, graphics pen. Now again, I've got my settings all ready. That's three and 50 and right diagonal. Again, this is gonna depend on your choice, but that works well for me for this image. I'm gonna click okay. Again, it's not really what I'm after. Not a problem, I come down into the blending options and this time I'm going to choose overlay. Looking good. Click OK. One last filter on this layer. I'm going to go to filter and pixelate and color half tone. There's a lot of settings in here. Through trial and error, I've chosen max a radius of 17 and I've left all these as the default. Feel free to have a play and see what's best for you. I'm going to click OK. Looking good. Again, I want to go into my blending options. And this time I'm going to take it from normal down to soft light. And that gives me more of the feel that I'm after. But have a play and see if there's a different setting that you like better for the effect that you're after. I'm going to click OK. And that's it for this layer. I'm going to turn on the visibility of the layer above it and make sure it's selected. And I'm going to convert it to a smart object. Just one filter on this layer. I'm going to go to filter and filter gallery. And this time I'm going to choose photocopy. There it is. Five and 50 works well for me, but again, it's going to be your choice. I'm going to click OK. Now this is far too much and I've lost all my color. This time I'm going to change the blending mode of the layer itself. And I can do that just here. I'm going to change that to multiply. And now we've got some really nice dark edges going on. Now I want one more layer to run one more filter, but I need it to be an amalgamation of my other two. So what I can do here is I can merge them all together or I can convert these two smart objects into a third smart object. And that's what I'm going to do. So with this layer selected, I can shift and click on the other layer, 
right click and convert to a smart object. Now I can still access those smart objects quite easily by double clicking on the smart object that I'm just creating. But I just want to put one last filter on here and I'm going to filter and camera raw filter. Now I can do all kinds of things in here. This really opens it up, but it's going to depend on what you want to do, of course. For me, I'm going to keep the exposure and the contrast as they are. I'm going to bring the highlights up to around about 27 ish. Like I say, I've been playing with this beforehand. I'm going to bring my shadows up to 55. I could just tap these in, of course. I'm going to leave my whites at zero and bring my blacks all the way down to, to minus 100. My clarity, well, I could bring that up and give it a bit more grunginess, but actually I'm going to bring it right down and just soften it up a little bit. The vibrance, I'm going to bring down. This makes for a very good printed look. If I bring the vibrance down and the saturation up, I'm going to bring that up to about there, we get more of a printed look. And finally, I'm going to change the temperature. The uh, skin isn't really warm enough for me, so I'm going to bring that up to around about 28. There we go. And it gives it an overall warm feel and certainly helps with the skin tones as a more kind of children's book illustration is the kind of look I'm going for. I'm going to click OK. And there we are. I'm done. Now, like I say, I can always go back and change any of the filters beforehand just by double clicking on this layer. It will then open up the previous one, the previous smart object, and I've got my two layers in there that I can change at any time. And there we go. We're all done. That's my illustration or comic strip effect. I hope it's helpful to you. Don't forget to share any of your results with me. I'd love to see them and share them with the Photoshop community. I'm Eric Rennick for tipsquirrel.com. I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye for now.